You are listening to Churchill's Arctic Commandos, Operation Muscatoon, 1942, written and narrated by Mark Felton. This is an audio-only programme for War Stories with Mark Felton. September 1942. High above the Arctic Circle, a dozen determined young men, drawn from elite Allied commando units, are on a mission of the utmost strategic importance, sent on the express orders of Winston Churchill. The mission is codenamed Operation Muscatoon. When the Germans conquered Norway in 1940, the country was a major manufacturer of aluminium, or as the Americans call it, aluminium, producing 30,000 tonnes annually. The Norwegian advantage was access to lots of electricity generated by unlimited water power. With aluminium vital to aircraft production, the leader of the Luftwaffe, Hermann Göring, hatched a plan to massively increase the production of this precious metal to 180,000 tonnes annually by 1944, representing thousands of extra German aircraft for the Nazi war machine, with of course disastrous results for the Allies. A string of smelting plants along the Norwegian west coast, each fed with electricity from a large power station, were ordered to massively increase output. Alarmed by Göring's plan, which would see a massive increase in aircraft production in Germany, loyal Norwegians warned London that something had to be done. The British had already launched several raids on Norwegian industrial targets with varying success. It was decided that a raiding party would destroy the Glomfjord power station, which supplied electricity to the nearby Haugvik smelting complex, the largest smelter in Norway that was producing 9,000 tonnes of aluminium for the Germans in 1940, but was in the process of increasing production sevenfold. Knocking out the biggest producer would be an incredible achievement for the Allies and a major problem for Göring and the Luftwaffe. The problem for the British was how to stop production at Glomfjord. A full-scale assault by British troops was ruled out as the approach to the power station down the Glomfjord, framed by high mountains on each side, was impossible. The Germans would have cut an assault to pieces. Aerial bombing was also ruled out as the station lay close to several villages. Civilian casualties would do little for Anglo-Norwegian relations and the Norwegian resistance was an important force fighting the Germans. The only possible way to get at the power station was by subterfuge. If a small and highly trained strike force could be landed by submarine along the coast, they might just be able to hike and climb their way in from behind the station, the last place the Germans would expect an attack but it's a very risky undertaking and would require men of the highest calibre to execute such a plan. The man chosen to lead the raid conceived of the plan whilst lying in a hospital bed with three German bullets in his shoulder, courtesy of another raid on Norway a few months before. Captain Graham Black, a 30-year-old fair-haired Canadian serving in the British Army, burned with an intense desire to hit the Germans hard in Norway, a country that he knew well. Black was serving in No. 2 Army Commando, a British Special Forces unit, and had been awarded the Military Cross for his previous raid on Norway. Given a green light by Churchill and Vice Admiral Lord Louis Mountbatten, the King's cousin and head of combined operations, Black recruited British members, led by 30-year-old Captain Joseph Horton, all highly experienced and tough-as-nails commandos. Horton, of the Queen's own Cameron Highlanders and No. 2 Commando, would be second in command of Operation Muscatoon. The Britons and Canadian are joined by two Norwegian members of Special Operations Executive, the SOE, whose local knowledge and language abilities would prove invaluable on the mission. A precision raid is planned, with detailed training and mock attacks undertaken in the highlands of Scotland on a hydro station, while the Royal Air Force conducted aerial reconnaissance of the target and scientific experts were brought in to help decide how best to destroy a complex power station. 
it was decided that the attack should concentrate on the vast turbine hall inside Glomfjord power station and its huge turbines. The Germans have heavily defended the station and the surrounding mountainous country and fjords, which are patrolled by boats. Getting to the target undetected would require all the skills and ingenuity that Captain Black and his men possessed, for twelve men would be no match against hundreds of German troops if it came to a fight. Operation Muscatoon is inserted by a French submarine, which was disguised as a German U-boat some distance from the target, after a difficult crossing of the North Sea. Such was the importance of the raid that the French submarine was escorted across the North Sea by three British submarines, but even so the sea approach was nerve-wracking, German patrol boats almost challenging the submarine several times as it approached the Norwegian coast by this stage by itself. A free French submarine had been chosen because of its great similarity to a German U-boat from a distance, and this subterfuge worked the German patrol boats allowing the submarine to pass at a distance. Landing by rubber dinghy, the strike force faced a gruelling hike up a massive feature called Black Glacier in order to stealthily approach the power station undetected from the rear. But the weather was terrible, with snow squalls, rain and freezing cold, and German patrols everywhere causing a delay to the assault, leaving Black and his men short of food and exhausted as they camped high in the mountains. Captain Black was left with no choice but to attack or abort the whole show and leave empty-handed. Therefore, on the night of the 19th to 20th of September 1942, the assault was finally launched. The commandos split into two teams. Team 1, of three men, targeted the massive seven-foot diameter high-pressure water pipes leading from the top of the mountain to the plant. They stealthily set plastic explosives. Team 2, of nine men, crept into the power station. They lay charges on the massive machinery in the turbine hall and gathered the Norwegian staff together and took them out of the station. But during the assault, a German sentry was shot, while another managed to escape down a one-mile-long tunnel connecting the power station with local villages to alert the German garrison. Captain Black ordered the charges detonated before the two teams headed for the mountains, throwing smoke grenades behind them into the tunnel. Hundreds of Germans started arriving instead by boat at the power station and pursued the commandos into the high mountains. Corporal Granlund, one of the Norwegian guides, got lost. An encounter with German troops left one commando dying of his wounds. The rest split into two groups, heading north and south. It was now a case of every man for himself. Group 1 consisted of Corporal Granlund and three Britons, and they headed north through the high mountains. They intended to walk to Sweden, a trek of 250 kilometres, through some of the roughest country in the world. They had no food and little hope. They were pursued all the way by German patrols and had several close encounters, nearly being captured. But somehow, by a miracle, they managed to walk for seven days, staggering across the Swedish frontier to safety. After a suitable period of recovery, these men were smuggled back into the UK. They were very lucky to have survived. The second group of Captain Black and six men headed south, fighting running battles with the Germans until they were cornered. Captain Horton, the second in command, was badly wounded in an exchange of fire with German mountain troops, and the group surrendered, thinking that they would be treated as prisoners of war. Sent to Germany, the commandos were imprisoned at Kolditz Castle, where they attempted to escape and managed to tell the other prisoners their story. A furious Hitler had already signed the Commando Order, which instructed that all captured commandos be executed. On the 13th of October 1942, Captain Black and his men were sent to Gestapo headquarters in Berlin for interrogation by the head of the Gestapo, General Heinrich Müller. Badly treated, the brave commandos were later transferred to Sachsenhausen concentration camp on the 22nd of October. The next day, the seven men were taken out and each shot in the back of the head by the SS. 
but their deaths, though tragic, were not to be in vain. Glomfjord Power Station was out of action for the rest of the war, ruining Göring's plan and damaging German war production. Every man on the raid was decorated for gallantry. It was one of the most successful small-scale raids of the war, demonstrating that a small force of highly trained and determined commandos could achieve incredible war-winning results. Of the four men who managed to make it to Sweden, Corporal Granlund was killed in February 1943 during Operation Seagull, when the Norwegian submarine he was travelling on was sunk. Another Briton was killed in Italy, and the other two Britons both survived the war. A memorial plaque at Sachsenhausen concentration camp for Captain Black and his men, who were the first victims of Hitler's commando order, records their fate. These seven men have no known graves, their bodies having been cremated by the SS. The twelfth man, the second Norwegian corporal, died of his wounds after being captured by the Germans in the mountains outside Glomfjord. You have been listening to Churchill's Arctic Commandos, Operation Muscatoon 1942, written and narrated by Dr. Mark Felton. For a wide variety of military history videos, please visit my other YouTube channel, Mark Felton Productions, and also help support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below. 